Hey guys, what's up? Carmando here. Welcome to my NXT TakeOver Brooklyn review. Um, I absolutely loved, loved the women's match, which I'll get into in a minute. Just truly mind-blowing, truly epic match. Um, but let's just start with the beginning. Uh, I'm not going to talk about like the pre-matches, but I heard that Eva Marie one was really bad. And that the fatal four-way one with the woman were, was a bit of a botch or something at the end. Um, and the fans were trying you fucked up or something. But we'll just go on to the main show. And first off, we have Jushin Thunder Liger defeating Tyler Breeze. 8 minutes 37. In a pretty good match. Uh, I loved Tyler Breeze's entrance. He came out <laughs> wearing, like, the best way to describe it would be like... A guy living in the forest and he has loads of fur and stuff for clothes. It looked kind of like that. He looked really epic. Um, and also he came out with a bunch of models, like women, and they were dressed like, like different parts of Brooklyn and New York or what have you. Um, and he was coming down and taking selfies with them. It was really cool. I really loved it. And also the setup for the show was the same as the last takeover like uh, I thought they were maybe gonna go like the same thing for like SummerSlam and what have you but it was it was different it was similar to the last takeover um, which is cool you know different unique didn't want it to be like the exact same as SummerSlam and Raw and what have you and um, but Jason Thunder Liger comes out um, and the, uh, the match was good you know not, not real like uh, not a real like memorable or like amazing match but it was it was a good match, you know. I loved the bit where like at the start where Breeze like beat him up a little bit, and then, um, then uh, then he goes on the ropes and does his pose thing, and then like Jushin Thunder Liger starts beating him up, and then he does the pose thing, and the crowd went went absolutely nuts for that. Um, it was uh, it was pretty cool, but eventually. Um, it ended with him doing the Liger bomb for the win. Uh, I thought Breeze might have might have won it, but uh, no, it was okay though. You know, I thought the crowd loved it as well. You know, it was good, it was decent. He also tried to take off his mask at one point. I think I just sort of looking, looking through the uh, recap here, but he also did like his surfboard thing, and he also beat him up, and then he he picked up uh, the selfie stick Liger. This is and starts you know, posing and stuff, and the crowd goes nuts for that. Um, he also, like, threw the selfie stick at him as well, yeah, at Breeze, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was good, it was good, but that was about it, you know, good match. Uh, also, the the pre-show, there was nothing much to speak about the pre-show. I don't know they happened there, they are just yapping. The, um, and it started also, it started with Triple H coming out in the ring, I don't know if the crowd could hear what he was saying initially, he just had on like a little mic on his shirt thing. Um, and then he said, we are NXT or something. And then the crowd went nuts, you know, it was really good, you know, a good little way to open up the show. And then after that match, we see Scott Hall, Kevin Ashton, and Sean Waltman sitting there, get a pop, doing the, the, two, the two sweet NWO thing. Um, backstage we see Bailey. She gets a pop. Charlotte and Becky Lynch come in and hug and shake hands. Then we got a vignette thing for Nia Jax, who's coming soon. She's related to The Rock. She was going by the name Lena Fanine, I believe, before. But uh, I think Nia Jax is a cool name. And I thought she was going to be the person that would come out for the VOD villains, but um, no, someone else came out for that match. Um, now th that match was next, um, and the Void Villains won, 10 minutes 15, and it was, you know, it was a good match, you know, once they got past the, the Rastholds, there was quite a lot of Rastholds, uh, but they brought out freaking Blue Pants, I never thought of her when I was making my predictions, I completely forgot about her, they brought out Blue Pants, the fans were chanting for her, she comes out, <laughs> there's a Blue Pants City chant, which just, I just, lost at that point, I just pissed myself at that point, not, not legit, not legit, but I was going, I was laughing at it, it was really good, um, but eventually, you know, oh yeah, they went for the double superplex, you know, Blake and Murphy, and then uh, Gotch comes in and power bombs them, uh, I thought English was going to win it after he hit the swanton bomb, but no, they kicked out, um, 
Bliss and Blue Pants have a little chase thing. Blue Pants goes to she blocks Bliss from slapping thingy, gotch and that. Um they brawl for a little bit and then it ends with Gotch and that hand there the tag team finisher, I think it's called the Swirling Dervish. And they won. It was really good, you know, I loved it, it was a good moment. Um well, yeah, we get to see the pre-show video of Finn arriving with Neville and Cesaro. Uh, next, we have Apollo Crews uh, defeating Ty Dillinger, 4 minutes 39. It felt longer because I was really expecting a, a better match. Um, people were saying it was amazing, but there was way too much rest holds in this, you know, for the match it was, you know, 4 minutes long and a lot of rest holds, you know. But the crowd was they went into the ten thing, so was I. I was I was doing it too. Um, not much to say, you know. It was a lot of rest holds. Um, at one point, he did a Dillinger did a um, a cartwheel and then said it was a ten. But then after that, Apollo Cruz did a cartwheel into a backflip, lands on his feet and does a ten, and the crowd was going nuts for that. Um, but mm, not much was happening. You see, I mean, there was too much, too much wrestlers I felt for this debut. You know, NXT isn't usually like this. Um, I wasn't a fan of that at all. Um, but he did hit this epic enziguri at one point. This is Cruz Apollo. He hit that at one point. It was really sounded nasty. Um, he does a splash in the corner. Uh, he does the military press and then hits a standard moonsault for the win. And that was really cool, you know, that was cool, but just too much rest holds for me. Just, just too much. This should have been a more... I'm not saying he should have... It should have been a back and forth match. Just, you know, too much rest holds. Um, next, and it's also his birthday. I thought it was his 20th, because I was just watching the, the exclusive video thing. I thought he said 20, but it was actually 28th, because when, when he said it, I was like... Damn, this dude is young, but he's actually 28. You know, still young, but you know, if he was 20, it just, I just, just like what? But he's 28. Next, we have William Regal announcing that there's going to be a Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic tournament that will begin on September 2nd, and will end at the next Takeover, which will be on October 7th. Um, which means they're now going to be doing them every two months, which I think might actually help because I feel the NXT has been like really lacking and been on a bit of a, a downhill I don't know slump or whatever it just seems to not be as as good the weekly episodes I, sp I spoke about it in my predictions it's still good but it's not as good as it once as once has been you know I feel if there's maybe two months maybe they'll the in between will be better because they'll be building to something a much more sooner or what have you. And also they announced, which I went nuts for this, they announced that NXT is coming to the UK in December and there is a show in Glasgow so I will be going to that. And it's on a Friday as well which is which is good. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I just went nuts when I seen it was in Glasgow. I just was going nuts, quietly nuts because you know it's in the early morning here. Um, but I'm really looking forward to that. And also, a takeover is going to happen there. A takeover is going to happen in the UK. Which, that's just, that's awesome. That's truly awesome. Um, it'll probably be like London or somewhere. But, uh, anywho, uh, we get our vignette for the next match, which is Baron Corbin versus Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe won by submission, 10 minutes 21. It was actually a pretty good match. You know, I was quite surprised. It was a good match. Um, I was really surprised by Corbin. Like, he sold this, like, Enziguri kick from Joe. He just sold it like a sack of potatoes. He just went down. He was out. And when the crowd went up to his face, he just lying there like... His mouth was open. The crowd started laughing. It was really good. Um, but... Um, you know, just a good match. You know, nothing really memorable. But it was a... It was a it was a good match. Um, Corbin had a nasty looking um, black hole slam. But he, would, he didn't even hold him with like two arms. He held him with like one arm for most of it. I, th I thought that was quite impressive. Um, just sort of looking through here. Mm, 
He dual blocks the end of days and applies the Kakina clutch. Um, slamming him by his neck for a two count. Hmm, okay. They, he gets into the Kakina clutch again and Corbin passes out. Um, what I thought was really funny was he passes out, the ref calls it, and then like a second later he's back. <laughs> I just thought they didn't really sell it very well. You just like a second later and boom, he's awake. <laughs> it was weird. Um, but glad to see Joe won, and he said he's gonna keep on like defeating people until he gets uh, to the NXT Championship or something. So yeah, maybe he'll face Finn soon. I don't know. Um, but going by the tapings, looks like Kevin Owens is gonna is gonna keep feuding with Finn. So yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, next we see Ric Flair, Sergeant Slaughter, and Japanese women's wrestler Kana sitting ringside, and then Tamina and Naomi is also there. Uh, when I seen Kana, I thought it was bloody Mia Yim or, or Jade from TNA. It looked like her, but um, no. Next, we have Stephanie McMahon comes out and says, this is cool and we're making history. She says that a Divas, Divas Revolution happened on Raw a few weeks ago, but the revolution actually started in NXT. Um, she agrees that Triple H, you don't put the, the NXT in the Divas in the main event. They are the main event. It should have been the main event. The women's match should have been the main event, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, she announces it as one of the main events tonight, and we go to a video package. And then we have Bailey versus Sasha Banks. Uh, this match lasted 70 minutes 38. It felt longer. You know, it was just an amazing match, which eventually Bailey won. Just Oh my god, you have to see this match. You have to see this match. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, Bailey comes out, she's wearing some um, polka dots on her, on her uh, like a headband and wristbands for uh, Dusty Rhodes. And then Sasha Banks comes out to a huge pop in a freaking uh, Cadillac Escalade, it says here. I was going to say Jeep. Um, and she's got security and all black surrounding her leading her to the ring and then lifts her up in the apron, that was so cool. Um, then we got ring introductions from Greg Hamelin, who is a horrible announcer. Oh my god, he's horrible at it. They really need to get someone else in it, get Jojo back doing it, she's she's the best one that they've got. Greg is just, he's not good at all. I've heard he's good at like MCing or whatever, but not good at the ring announcing, just horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, anyways, just there were so many moments in this match that I was just going absolutely nuts for the the ending. Holy shit! Just oh man, I'm gonna fl try and flick through here and see if I can find some good moments. But um, honestly, you just need to see the match, start to finish, amazing. Um, I'm just flicking through. Sasha kept going for the double knees. It was it was blocked a few times. Eventually, she hit it with Bailey on the top rope, and the crowd went nuts for that. Um, she eventually goes outside and takes off Bailey's hand brace thing, then puts her hand in between the steps, and then bloody kicks the steps. That was brutal. Uh, they wonder if Bailey's hand is broken. There's an "This is awesome" chant. She Sasha bloody did a front flip to the outside onto Bailey, which I thought f when she first did it that she like nailed her head, but she didn't. When I seen the replay, she was okay. That was awesome. She jumped right over the ref as well. That was so cool. Um, um, Sasha does the the bank statement and looks like Bailey's gonna tap out, but she rolls over and then reverses it into her own bloody like cross face. That was cool. Uh, this is awesome chance again. I, th there was even a, a, I think like this is women's wrestling or something or women's wrestling chant. Uh, just there's so many moments from this match. Like it's so hard to to to, to like mention them all because there was so many. It was just awesome from start to finish. The best match by far. I was going nuts at all these moments that were happening. Um, Oh man, um, uh, what are we getting Julian Chance? I feel like they're not even mentioning all the moments here in this recap. Um, 
Bailey eventually nails this crazy reverse Hurricane Rana, which just blew my mind. I went absolute apeshit at this, and then hits the Bailey to Bailey and won it. But also, before that, she hit a Bailey to Bailey and... Oh yeah, she f she picked her by the by the legs with Sasha holding on the ropes. She lands on her feet, then Bailey hit the Bailey to Bailey, and I thought that was it. But Sasha kicked out, and then we got this the modified Hurricane Rana thing, which just I, I was going nuts. I was going absolutely nuts, quietly nuts, like I said before. But I was going nuts. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't see a match like this on the main roster. There's no way you could Nikki could pull this off. I mean, she couldn't even um, take the bank statement properly on Raw. There's no way she could take a, a Hurricane Rana like that. Just no way. Um, Bailey wins. We see a, a shit ton of highlights, um, and Bailey's like getting emotional. Um, Becky Lynch and Charlotte come out to celebrate, and we get more replays, and then. Sasha gets up and she's hugging Bailey and they're all hugging each other and doing the four horsemen, th horsewoman thing. Um, just amazing, like just truly amazing. Just uh, I was just going nuts the entire match. I was sitting on the edge of my bed. Well, I'm on the edge of my bed anyway, but I was just going nuts. Truly amazing, absolutely amazing match. Um, best match of the night should have been the main event. Just incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, next we get a SummerSlam promo and then we see Sethy Rollins sitting at his ringside with his girlfriend Zara Schreiber who was the one who leaked those nude photos a while back um, but they didn't show her name um, people were calling her a zebra before uh, when that whole thing happened uh, just because of her name um, then we show, we see Triple H announcing the UK thing which must have happened before the thing he went on the air because it didn't happen when it happened, when it was live. Um, it all happened from December 10th through December 16th. Um, I don't think he actually mentioned the takeover thing. I'm not sure. Maybe he did. I can't remember. But there will be a takeover there. Uh, then we get to see a vignette for the main event. Then we get on to the ladder match for Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor, which Finn Balor won. The match was 29 minutes 57 seconds. Which I honestly thought the women's match was longer than that. It it was just it was just so good. Maybe I was just into it from start to finish. Maybe that's why it felt so good. Um, but this was a you know a, a good match. You know it was, and also it went past the eleven o'clock or whatever time it was there. It was like twenty two minutes longer. Um, at one point the crowd was doing the olays. Um, and then and then um, it was funny because Kevin Owens just looks at them and, and then he and then he goes, oh, oh, oh. it was hilarious. The crowd was laughing at it too. Um, and also when they were doing the ring introductions, one person threw in a streamer and the crowd was 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 going nuts at the guy. Um, I do also what was happening during this match. The crowd was going nuts at something that was happening in the crowd, but we didn't get to. I think to see it. Um, something happened in the crowd. I don't know what it was. If you know, tell me. Um, but, you know, a good match. You know, a good match, but just nowhere near the caliber of Bailey and, and Sasha Banks. Like, just nowhere near it. Um, one of the moments, the good moments, was uh, Finn was on the ladder and then no one's grabbed him down for the power bomb. That was really cool. Um, uh, Oh, another epic moment. It was really funny. Uh, he has the ladder. Owens has the ladder set up on Finn on the outside. And uh, I was like, what the hell is he a way to do here? Like, the ladder was propped up against him, like, at an angle. I thought he was maybe he could do, like, the cannonball or something. And he runs up and then just <laughs> punches him in the face. The crowd went nuts for that. Um, but... You know, the, again, they're not really just showing a whole lot in this recap here. Um, I'm just sort of flicking through it here. Um, oh yeah, Finn Owens goes to the power bomb on the floor, but Finn thingies him over the barricade, like back into the like beside the ring. They were outside for a little minute. Um, Owens launch, launches Balor over the announce table. Takes an announce table off and smacks it off his fin. 
thought they were going to do something with the energy table, but they didn't. Um, he gets another ladder. E the ladder. Baller drop kicking. Owens turns around to Balor, drop kicking him off the top of the announce table. The ladder hits Owens and also f Oh yeah, the ladder hit Owens and then it it fell on Balor too. It was a holy shit chant. Looks like it hurt Balor on his leg. Um uh, Owens pulls the ladder to the floor and Balor leaps out onto him. The floor. Hmm. Uh, I'm just flinging through here because I can't really remember because I was watching all the bloody NXT exclusives and I was reading some stuff about NXT. Um, a weird recap. It doesn't really make sense. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, Owens went for something, um, no sorry, Balor went for something, then Owens clotheslined him. Um, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't as nowhere good as the Bailey match, I, I can't say that enough, it just wasn't. Um, Owens goes to powerbomb Balor on a ladder, but it's reversed, no one's lands on the ladder bad. Hmm. Uh, Owens goes for the cannonball in the corner, but Balor moves and he nails the ladder. That looked pretty nasty. Um, Balor's on the top. He's trying to grab the title. He's too far away. And then he hits the the coup de gras on him. I don't know how that move isn't as injured people. Like I mean, that's someone dropping all their weight on him, um, their opponent's chest or whatever. I don't know how the bones or that haven't been broken from that. I really don't. Um. This fucking three. Owens hits the pop-up power bomb in the apron. I thought maybe that would be it, but Owens was laid out as well. So and the match continued. Um. Baller tips over the title. Baller, Baller tips over the ladder. Sorry, Owens lands on his feet and nails a kick to the jaw. Baller hit the ladder hard on his way down. Owens doesn't stay down, then kicks him in the face again. Then Owens bridged a ladder in between the ladder and the bottom rope. And it looked like he was going to do the, uh, um, like it's the, the fisherman suplex or the, or the, I can't remember what he called it, what he called that, like brain buster thing. He, I was like, there's no way this is happening. There's just no way. And then eventually Owens, uh, um, gets knocked on the ladder. It looked sick because his head went back. I don't know if his head hit or not. It was a weird camera angle. Um, but it looked nasty. Uh, eventually, Finn reaches, but he's far away from the belt. Uh, I think that. I think that's when he hit the goody graph from the ladder. Um, Finn repositions the ladder, climbs up, and wins. But yeah, Bailey, and that should have. Uh, Definitely been the main event. I thought we we're maybe gonna get something afterwards, maybe leading to a potential future match or something, or Owens like stealing the title because that's what a lot of people were thinking going by the tapings. But um, yeah, nothing even comes close to Bailey and Sasha. I just was loved that match from start to finish. Um, I even said in a comment on the site that it was truly epic and I was going nuts, you know. I was, I can't say enough that that match was just incredible. Truly incredible. And I've yapped here for 24 minutes, I can't believe it. But yeah, that was the NXT thing. Takeover. Uh, I'm just, I was just looking through to see if there's anything else to speak about. I don't think so. Um yeah that's it tell me your thoughts if you loved it if you hated it some people are saying like 10 out of 10 I wouldn't say that Bailey and Sasha Banks yes 10 out of 10 but you know because of the thingy match uh, Apollo Crews was a lot of wrestles there was a lot of wrestles in the tag match Joe and that was surprisingly good you know it was surprisingly good 
I'd give it a B, definitely. Give it a B. Sasha Banks that match. I, I've said it so many times, but it was amazing. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I'm about to go and get something to eat because I'm kind of hangry now. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'm going to read all of WWE's tweets about this. It's, they had 180 tweets since before fucking NXT went on the air. Like a couple of hours before. That's that's insane. Um, but yeah, I'm going to read all about that. See if they've got any good stuff going there. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. <sighs> I am really fucking hungry. <laughs> really hungry. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'll see you for SummerSlamming. 12 hours, I need to get some sleep. Bye.